Welcome to another Synthwick tutorial. So in this one, I will be creating Christmas lights that change color randomly. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to create my Christmas lights, right? So I'm going to be using my spline tool. So let me select that. And in my layer type, I'm going to be selecting the first type, which is the region layer type. And then I'm going to go ahead and create something that looks like a Christmas light. All right, so I have this. I'm not too satisfied with the shape here. So I'm just going to zoom in and select it and alter the shape a bit till I get to something that I can work with. And I think we almost have it here. So yeah, I think this is fine for all purposes. All right, so here I have my light. And I'm just going to go ahead and add like a base to the light. So using my rectangle tool. Um, so let me select my layer type here. I think I'm going to go with the second layer type. I'm just going to draw a knob here like so. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color of that. Uh, please know that this is not really all that important. I'm just trying to make things look good for the tutorial, okay? Um, but we're concerned with the lights. Um, so let me just rotate this around, move this down. All right, so there we have everything set up. Let me move this below this. And let us rename our layers just to stay organized. So I'm gonna call this lights. And I'm gonna call this, um, I don't know, base. Could be anything really. Okay. So now we have our lights. So let's get it to start blinking randomly. Um, and to do that, all I need to do is select the lights layer, then come over into my color property, uh, into my properties and where it says color, just simply right click, convert and click, click on random. And once you click on random, if you scrub through your timeline now, you will see that the color itself changes randomly. So with that done, we can now, we are now presented with some properties for the changing of the color. So if you look here, you see a drop down. And if I should click on that, we can see the different options that is within um, this property here. So let's go ahead and look. Um, here we see link, and this contains the initial color. Uh, the radius, you can change the radius to, let's change this to maybe two and see what happens. So that basically alters the color like so. Um, if I change this to 0.5, right, we see it reverts to the color. So the lower I go, the color is getting darker and darker. So let's change this to zero, right? And the color um, remains. Um, the seed basically, tells you by what value um, the color should randomly change. So you feed different values into it um, and it, it changes. Uh, the speed is, of course, how long it takes to change from one color to the next. So if we increase this by two, well, let me first put it at one and press play so you can see the speed at which is, it's going. So nothing is happening and that's because I changed the radius to one. Uh, to zero, sorry, so we can't see what's happening. So let me put this back to one. And if I should pre press play again, we see that it's changing. Uh, so we can mess with the speed, the seed. Uh, you can change the values here. I mean, let's put this down to 100 and see what happens. 100, and then press play. I think it has a bit more colors. Uh, let me put this down all the way to one actually and see how that goes. Mm, not much variety, right? Um, so I'm gonna go 200,000. Uh, keep in mind that the best thing to do is probably to um, have kept the initial value. Okay, because that was good already. Um, 
But now because I changed it, I'm just randomly typing in values to see what happens, okay? I think I'm gonna increase this by maybe 500,000. So let's move on. So the speed, so if I press, uh, let me go to like three and see what that looks like. You see now that it, it's moving very fast, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna put it to two. All right, so let's let it stay at two. Now the interpolation, um, think of this as like keyframes so you can change the the animation type of how the the colors animate so for example spline would give you like a smooth transition from one color change to the next so i just changed Yo, it my. to spline so let's play and if you look at it you see that it's slowly changing right so each of these interpolation types give you a different um pretty much a different transition type right but i'm just going to leave that at cubic and um yeah the loop time you can change you can mess around with this right i think this helps you to lose loop it at a particular um part, particular area and you can see that it's, uh, it's just uh, looping between two colors but we don't want that right so i'm going to change this back to zero so that i can get um all the colors that it was changing before all right so now that we have that set up, I mean, now you can pretty much just make it look um, much more pretty. So I can add a line for it to be on, for example. So let me just add this line like so. And I don't want that. So I'm going to delete that. Go back to my spline tool and click on the second layer type, which is the outline layer. I added it on the region layer before, so let me just go again. And create something like so. Enter. And yeah, so we work with this. Uh, I'm gonna change the color for this to maybe a dark green. Close, and I'm gonna increase the width. So outline width, I'm gonna increase that to maybe 15. Uh, that's probably too much so go to 10 yeah and now I'm pretty much done just going to set up my lights right you know on second thought I don't think I need the, the base I mean you can add it if you want but it's not a part of, of the tutorial it's just to make things look um, better uh, so let me move this lights up and I'm going to rotate and what I'm going to do is just to duplicate these lights a couple of times and place them um, on different areas on the line. So Control C, Control V, I'm going to duplicate it by maybe about this much. And then I'm just going to select each of those and move them at different areas, right? So let me rotate this one. Put this here. Select this one here. And I'm just gonna rotate this. And um, you can you know change the size of some of these if you want. You can scale some down. You know, just to have a, a, a wide variety or some variety in the different lights. Let me place this one here. Let me rotate and place this one here. and rotate this one as well i think i'm going to scale this one down a bit just a tad bit and then move it here okay um so if i should play this now we see that we now have a bunch of <laughs> randomly blinking lights you can get better results with this if you change each of the initial colors something different right uh, but because it's random once you create one and duplicate it the colors will be random anyway so um, so yeah uh, I'm just gonna click on the background and change this to black so you can see it much much clearly 
and press play. Now we have a bunch of changing lights. So this is pretty cool. There's also one more thing that you could do to make this look really awesome. Um, and that is to mess around with the feather option. So for each of these lights, I'm just going to go and go click on, I'm going to click on this one, go into my properties and where it says feather, I'm going to add a random converter to this one. So if I right click convert and search for random, click on that, we can see that the random property of the feather is being affected. So if I should add that to each of these, right, we'll have a better effect. And also keep in mind that because this is random, you can't alter how, um, you know, how it affects the, well, the, the, the rate at which it, it changes. Um, well, that's somewhat of a lie because there are also some properties within um, within the feather options that you know give you some amount of control. So, but yeah, but we won't get into that. So, with that now done, if I should play, right, we see you get that it gets that nice blur blurred effect. So yeah, so you could add this to yours to make it look even more awesome. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Yo, Tim Hardy.